Hello and welcome to today's video. So this time we're going to be taking a look at my vintage pickups for the month of May 2022. We'll be giving them a bit of a clean and a polish and uh, having a look at them in detail. So without further ado, sit back, relax and let's get to it. Okay, so we'll start off with the latest issue from the Men's Adventure Quarterly. This is issue number five. This has only um, popped through my letterbox this week, so I've not had a chance to read it yet. But this particular issue is like a focus on Dirty Dozen style missions, and um, it pulls the very best of those sorts of stories from the 1950s Men's Adventure magazines. Um, it's by uh, Bob Dice and uh, Bill Cunningham, and a guest editorial this month by uh, paperback maven just in Marriott. So uh, if you've not already ordered your copy from Amazon, and I'll put a link in this for this one down below, um, do please do so. It looks fantastic. I'll have a full dedicated review of this one coming up very soon on the channel. Also received this month was the latest issue from the uh, Penguin Collector Society, uh, Penguin Collector number 98. Um, very, very uh, quality publication. This is getting better all the time. Um, it's now full colour throughout. And um, I'm, I'm very glad to see that it started covering a few other sort of um, early publishers as well as Penguin now, um, even if it's just Penguin competitors. But it's nice to see non-Penguin stuff in here for a change, uh, which is good to, good to see. So always a good read. Um, lots lots to uh, to have a look at and uh, if you even have a passing interest in the history of um uh, penguin books i urge you to uh, to join the penguin collectors society because it's well well worth it um also of interest i've not had a chance to read this yet because once again i only received it this week it's a friend of mine um he uh, has written a book in douglas robertson he's over in um I believe he's over in greece and uh yeah, he lives his life in Greece. Um, he's a friend of another friend of mine called Duncan, who is an actor. And uh, he sent me over this copy to have a look at. It looks right up my alley uh, on Frankenstein. So I think I'm going to really enjoy this one. It's really nice, even though it's like, um, you know, like privately printed, you know, uh, print on demand. It's a really, really handsome edition, this one in hardback, although you can get it in paperback and ebook as well. So uh, have a little look for this. I'll let you know how I get on. Um, but this is one that's on my to be read pile now and it does look uh, a lot of fun so that's most of the sort of the new releases that have come my way however i have um picked up a few vintage finds which are... so first off then we've got this uh a pelican so i've had a small order come through from drew the penguin chap and he's found a few more bits off my wants list and um i'm trying to i need just a handful of pelicans to lick the first sort of 600 or so um and i'm almost there now and he's found just a, a handful more for me which is good news so i'm going to uh get these cleaned as we go along i've also been trying to complete graham green in vintage paperback so i've got a, an awful lot but i haven't quite not quite got all the the penguins but i'm almost there so when i do i'm going to be doing a, a graham green in vintage paperback video um, it's one that I'm working on doing at the moment. Now, as I film this, this is literally the day before I go to uh, Hay on Wai with uh, Steve, the uh, outlaw bookseller, who's also on YouTube here. And uh, I'm hoping, that's why I definitely need to film this today, because I want to get all my wants this up today before I head off there. Um, here's another pelican that I've been after. And I'm hoping to find a few Graham Greens, the last handful that you don't need about three now um thanks to this latest lot and um i'm also trying to track down all the uh the penguins that had covers under the directorship of this chap which is abram Gaines. so penguin collector society did a little mini special there's his signature there abram Gaines, and um for a while they did i think it was about 30 covers that had um this is in the 50s that all had these Abraham Games designed covers. Um, he didn't draw them all, he drew a handful, um, but he was like in overall control of the experiment. It didn't last long, um, but some of them I think are absolutely fantastic. I really, really love them. Um, other ones are yeah, take it or, or leave them really, but this is like a little special on it. And it shows all the covers in detail. And I'd like to get this set and then make a dedicated video on them again. So I'm not missing many, and you'll see a few of these today. Um, and uh, once I've got the last couple that I need, I think it is only about three now. Um, that's one of my favourites. I shall, uh, 
I shall do a dedicated video, so do look out for that because it's going to be a good one. I want to say that was also published by the, the Penguin Collector Society. So here's uh, one of the Graham Greens. This is a nice copy of this one, The Heart of the Matter. This is a really nice sort of unread one, which is how I wish they all were. Um, but trying to find them in first um, edition like this is actually quite tough because he's a very well read author and the books do get read and reread quite a bit. I'm going to put these into, they're not going to need brushing off, so I'll brush them, then I'll sort them into the ones that are going to be need polishing. This is a copy of Tibetan Marches. Not great. Um, as I said, I just would like to get the set, and then I'll work on sort of upgrading the copies that I've got. But um, it's okay for now. Now, um, recently, quite a lot of my viewers have bought some books off me. If you may remember, a little while back, I... Um, I did the paperbacks for sale video and that went down amazingly well and I, I sold maybe I don't know 300 vintage paperbacks they went right around the world some to America in fact, a few orders to America uh, some to Canada big load to Canada and obviously lots within the UK so it's definitely an experiment I shall be doing again so when I've got more spare books that have come my way I'll um, I'll put them all into a video um, and we'll uh, we'll do the same thing again if you want early access to those, I do heartily suggest joining the uh, the channel here on YouTube or becoming a Patreon because uh, Patreon and channel members had access to that list one week before it went public. So if you want first grabs at the books, that's a very, very easy way to do it is, is become a supporter of the channel. Um, here's a these are Abram Games. That was an Abram Games cover. Um, here's another one here. This is uh, see the thing is historically I've come across this one lots and lots of times, but I've never bothered to pick it up. Um, and quite often it's because the books, yeah, see, it's a reprint, so I would have just instantly dismissed it. But I actually want it for this particular series of cover designs, so I'm, I'm having to go back now and pick up some of these. Now, these are going to benefit from a bit of a polish in a minute. But I must thank my patrons and channel members. They're doing fantastically well um, supporting the channel. They get at least one early access video every single week. And... Uh, it's really great to interact with them so uh, if you've not thought about helping the channel um, and my efforts um, please do now this is uh, quite an interesting one it's a sovereign special so you don't see many of these around it's actually in a in a jacket here it's a wartime one that's so obviously Hitler is the subject it's got a little bit of fading to the to the dust wrapper but I'm not overly worried about that I don't think I've got any other Sovereign books in my collection. I don't think, but there's no way I was going to let this one pass me by. Um, it turned out whilst I was sorting all those other books for sales so underneath, the dust wrapper has done a very good job. And apart from a little bit of toning, it's really, um, really sort of preserved it. A bit some tape in the back there, but I would imagine these are probably quite scarce. Probably. Let's get a little bit of pencil inside. So we shall get that. A lot of these aren't going to need too much work, but I think the ones that can be polished are going to benefit from a polish. Now, on this one, it's on the inside cover as well. I've got a pencil mark. So what I want to do, I don't really want to put full pressure on that because potentially it'll um it'll bend the cover back too far so i'll get another sort of book to put next to it which is a similar height and then when i bend the cover back it's not being bent back all the way and so i've got like it's almost like makes a little table and we can uh, gently take off that previous owner's signature which is nothing special and i don't want to keep it in there like so Now, uh, another one of my patrons, speaking of my patron supporters, um, is Glenn. He's been with me a long, long time. Professor Echo on YouTube. And uh, he sent a great photo, which I'll pop on the screen now, of his cat getting rather agitated at watching one of my uh, cleaning videos. I think it's the one where I clean the James Bond book club heart packs, the Ian Fleming books. So um, it's nice to have a feline fan. And thanks for sending that one in, Glenn. Um, I was a bit shocked to see one of my videos being played on such a big big screen it's a bit like it's a bit weird i always sort of picture 
people watching them on like I don't know tablets or mobile phones although I do know you know YouTube gives you the stats and I do know there is a percentage of my viewers who do watch on the big screen and that sort of I don't weirdly terrifies me I don't, I don't know why um here's another Graham Greene here uh, Lost Childless is a collection of essays this one I think is quite scarce you know I mean you know the fact that I've not come across this one in first edition before I really don't know but eminently accessible um, lots of short you know, essays in that, which I love reading from authors like this. Um, uh, Penguin did a very good one by George Orwell, um, which is, I think it's called A Very English Murder, a similar sort of line, and it's uh, excellent. Here's a little piccolo. It's a it's the uh, movie tie-in to The Golden Voyage of Sinbad. Not my favourite of the uh, 70s Sinbad movies. That was Sinbad and the Eye of the Tiger. But this one is still a, a good one. Got some stills in as well, which is cool. And uh, Piccolo, as I'm sure you know, is uh, was like the junior imprint of um, Pam Books. And here we are, 1973. So I'll probably pop this one in my... Um, I'll probably pop this one in my film and TV tying collection rather than my Pam collection because I've got a couple of other Piccolo books in that one. Incidentally, the TV and movie tie-ins, I've been going through my collection of those recently on my other channel. I'm on to part three. They've been going down incredibly well, so I'm not missing anything out. It's every single sort of TV and movie tie-in that isn't part of a main series, like Penguin or Pam. So there's some absolutely cracking books in there. So if you've not checked out the other channel yet, please do, because uh, there's some good stuff over there and some really good uh, cleaning videos and it is one video a week um here's an interesting dell one which um i didn't want once again i didn't want to sort of miss out keeping uh book on the bear pigs it's a nice dell really really nice condition i go with my vintage dell collection here 1964 first printing quite nice that one i know it's a non-fiction one but i don't mind military non-fiction because it's a subject that interests me anyway so i'm uh, very pleased to get that one Here's Our Man in Havana. Now this one's come through, but it is actually, um, it's got a taped cover, which I'm not particularly happy about. I'm not going to keep this one in my collection. And to be honest, I actually thought I already had a copy anyway. So I don't know how I ended up with a double of this one. So I'm going to keep it. It's going to be a reader because it's one of his all-time best books, is Our Man in Havana. So I'll keep it as a reader anyway. Um, I managed to track down a few more puffins. Once again, uh, these handful of through Drew the Penguin chap. Um, I'm, I'm not that far now off. I've got one to a hundred on the Puffin Storybooks Complete. And I'm now chasing down 100 to 200, of which I'm only needing a handful now. I think it's less than 10 to have the full run from uh, uh, number 101 to 200. So once I've got that licked, I shall definitely be doing a, a second video looking at the, the second hundred. The toughest one, of course, is uh, number 161, which is The Hobbit. Um, of which I saw a copy recently. Admittedly, it was mint, but it sold on eBay for just under £300. So, incredible, eh? Tale of Troy, uh, Roger Lancelin Green. Um, I did once know his son, Richard Lancelin Green, um, who was a eminent Sherlock Holmes collector, and I had uh, a few dealings with him uh, back in the late 90s um i bought a very very big collection of sherlock holmes related books and memorabilia from a museum that was uh, close to where i live that was shutting down and um he bought some bits and pieces i mean the, the stuff went all around the world but he was an eminent his son was an eminent sherlockanian fan and uh, he bought a load of a load of it and i had a few i said i'd, I'd read his dad's uh, puffin books um i thought it must be him and it, it was oh here's another one um Grey Friars Bobby, blimey alrighty. This is pretty obscure. But once again, oh, it looks like it's a film, is it a film tie-in? Yeah, it looks like it's a kid's film tie-in by the look of it. Who'd have thought it? Yeah, the Walt Disney film. There we are. I, did, I never heard of it. It's one I've not heard of. So it's, a, it's actually a movie tie-in to a Disney film. Well, there you go. I know there's a nice puff into 101 Dalmatians, but it's it's the book. It's not really a tie into the uh, to the the animated film. Uh, this is quite nice, Oscar Wilde, Happy Prince. I think this is quite scarce, you know. But some of these puffins, you know, unless you really dedicate yourself to trying to track them down, um, it's difficult to know. But I'm more than happy to uh, to to let the dealers do it. 
I don't have anything like enough time to go out looking for books, but I have got two days coming up uh, to do just that. So um, I'm going to be I'm filming this on the Saturday, on the Sunday tomorrow. I'm going to be heading up to Bath. I'm going to meet up with the Outlaw Bookseller, as I said. We are then going to take a trip to the Book Barn, which is um, a big second-hand book warehouse. I don't expect to find much up there. Um, and Book Barn have these horrible big stickers on the back of their second-hand books, which I'm really not a fan of because you can't take them off very easily or not at all, really. So I don't know how that's going to be. But regardless, I've never been there, and I think it's going to make a really interesting video um, a dedicated video just on my trip to the book barn so look out for that then the very next day I'm staying overnight in Bath and then we're going to be um, heading off to Hay on Wye which is uh, like the, the home of books and we're going to have a look through some of the, the good second hand bookshops in Hay on Wye um, there's not quite as many as there used to be anymore sadly um, lots of them have, uh, have sadly shut over the years and it's not quite the hub for books that it once was however there's still loads to see and i'd like to get up there before it gets even worse and there's a few highlights I, i'm looking forward to one is the uh the cinema bookshop which is a big converted cinema adiman books is another one which um i'm very keen to look at and they've got like a couple of shops and a like, dedicated crime one as well i'm not expecting to find much in the way of bargains but you never know it's such a big place and this is a uh, a touchnoid edition so do look out for the the uh the out and about videos because i'm going to have about three coming up um from this weekend if not four it depends what we find up there to be honest and obviously um any pickups that i make are going to be in a video as well so this is a, a touch knit edition um you don't see many of these uh, this is a later one um they were published in continental europe for distribution over there but not within the uk so this is 1949 so yeah very late for a touch niche but i've got quite a few from the 30s in my collection but i don't think i got any this far back but once again i didn't when i was going through all my spares and stuff i didn't want to um not keep this one as part of that collection this is another one, which is nothing special it's just an odd uh, an odd reprint but it's got a different cover to the original and um, I will a bit like the pans if it comes my way and it's dirt cheap I'm going to um, just keep um, like alternate covers whilst I've got the space to do it here's another one that came out under the uh, Abraham Games one with these uh, picture covers it's going to benefit from a, a polish this one but apart from that it's quite a nice nice copy it's a crime one so they're always a little bit more sought after very very nice it's obviously not the first edition uh, it's just the later reprint with the uh with the designed cover there dennis piper very nice there dancers in mourning you can see the uh wind up gramophone record there in silhouette that's pretty cool um i'm struggling for room here a little bit but we've got just enough room to finish these off here's another unusual one so this is at uh, the ship by c.s forrester um author of the Hornblower books, which I absolutely love. This isn't part of the Hornblower series, it's one of his other ones. Um, it was written, uh, I think, during the war, just prior to the war. Um, pretty scarce, these. And uh, Michael Joseph was his hardback publisher. Um, and they didn't, this was their first sort of dabbling into paperbacks, really. And it didn't really last um, because um, of the format, I think. It's just too thin. They're published at the height of the war. And uh, they were more digest size rather than paperback size. Maybe they wanted to be a little bit different to Penguin. I don't really know. But um, I don't think I've... I might have one other in this series in my collection. But that's about it. So they're so scarce. I wanted to... Well, I didn't want to not keep this one. So I'm just a few pages bent back there. And particularly since... I would love Forrester as an author. He is so readable. He's great. Not um, Because all the books are historical anyway, they don't date. So it's just his writing style, which I think is, is really terrific. So if you've never read C.S. Forrester, what an influence he was on so many uh, uh, other authors. Here's another interesting one. This is a focus book. Now, I'm pretty sure I've got one or two focus books in my collection. Um, once again, around this time, the Penguin Specials, were mega popular um you know from 1930 
late 37, 38. Um, they were publishing brand new books every single month and they were selling over like 100,000 copies. So it was inevitable that some other publishers would want to get in on the act. And this one is, uh, is a focus one on uh, General de Gaulle. Very, very brittle and I see it's actually detached. So we shall have a go at trying to fix it. The spine here, as you can see, is it's in a rough old state here. There's bits of it falling off in my hands. So let's give that a little... Look, the toothbrush, he's back. Back from retirement. The glue has just basically aged really badly. Nothing to worry about. You know, we can put our own glue on there. But it certainly is in a sorry old state. But it's worth saving this. It really is. Okay. Now, the jacket itself. It's a card jacket. It's quite robust. Let's give that a little, little wipe. Now, to be honest, there's a little bit of pencil in there, which I am going to get out. Um, hopefully, I'm having to be very, very gentle here because... The paper has got super brittle. A little 60p came out really easy. The name is coming, but it's, it's slow work. there it is it's just coming off but it's just taking its time i don't want to overdo it because i'll, I'll rip the page because it's so brittle to be honest i think that'll do move all that dirt over there Be a dusty job this, you know. So I'm gonna run some glue along the spine there, and I'm gonna run some glue on the actual remnants of the spine over there, and hopefully that'll be enough just to keep it in place for now. So I've been quite generous. And with this one, it's going to be horrible. It's a horrible, mucky mess, to be honest, you know. So I don't think I'm going to put any on there, which I traditionally would. I'm just going to, I've put it on really heavily on the normal spine. So I'm just going to leave it at that. Obviously, I want to make sure I put it on the right, right way around. There we are. It's not perfect, but it's going to be better. And it will keep it in place. And it really is just a result of it being stored in obviously a very, very hot environment, which is why it's gone so brittle and flaky. And it's just completely dried the glue out. But as a copy, you know, it's got a really nice spine on it. So I, I definitely want to want to keep this one. And in a moment, we'll we'll give it a brush off along the top. So not, not a terribly difficult repair, but one that I think that was uh, definitely worth doing, you know. Yep. Right, now the next thing I see in front of me is this one, which is Cicero. So uh, I've done a dedicated little video on this because this is something that turned up once again. It was a book that I found recently. And as you can see, there's something going on here. So let me just play you that little video now. Okay, here's a little mystery. Two copies of I Was Cicero, Alicia Banza. Now, this is a pan book. It's numbered X307. But as you can see, almost from the off, these books are the same, but also slightly different. So they're both marked as first editions, but this one on the left here is considerably sort of thicker in page count than the one on the right. So if we look at the one on the right, first of all, it's got a photo insert, and it's just like an ordinary sort of pan book. It's 175 pages. And inside, the printing 
History, first published in the UK in 1962, this edition published 1964 by Pound Books Limited. Okay, can we look at this one here, X307, much, much thicker, almost as if even the spine um, writing is not centred. Very, very strange. Back cover is the same. But inside, 192 pages. And what was this? 175. So a larger page count. The pages are much, much thicker in quality. There's no uh, photo insert, but there's the odd photo throughout the text. And then if you look at the printing history, first published 1962, this edition published 1964. It's a variation of exactly the same book, one with photo insert and one without, both marked as first edition, but in actual fact quite, quite different. So a bit of an unusual one that, and uh, well, I don't think I've ever come across that before, but I'm, I'm sure there's a reason behind it. And uh, I shall send this over to Tim, my friend over at the uh, Pan Collector's Book Blog, Ticket.net, and uh, see what he has got to make of it. So I did speak to Tim of the Pan Collector's website, Ticket.net, and Tim came back to me and he said, thanks for the video. I will admit I had not noticed that there were two versions, but when it comes to Pan, they seem to do their own thing. So... Tim says he thought he had the 176 page version, but it turns out his was also the 192 page one. So he says, I just bought a copy of the 176 one, as there seems to be a few lurking on eBay, but there were also 192 page copies. So it looks like neither one is rarer than the other. Um, he says it's a bit like the fat James Bond, but he can't remember which title that is. Um, but he says he doesn't have a copy of that one. There are also fat and thin versions of the Fountain of Life. There we are. So I did not know that, but I knew Tim would know. And it uh, looks like we've uncovered a, an unknown pan variant there, which is pretty cool, isn't it? I love it when we do that sort of stuff. Here's a very early pelican, look, pelican number eight, which is one I didn't have, the floating republic. Um, there's no dust wrapper with this one. So my suspicion is that there's a flap of the dust wrapper. It had one and um, it's been um, it's been removed. Now I spotted a... Uh, Pencil mark inside. Yep, 350. This one, wow. Let's see if we get that out. Lovely. That's nice. Another grey marine now. A gun for sale. A little bit of a uh, little bit of a water ripple just on the edges there, but absolutely fine. As I said I, I do want to. I'll keep any spares that I get as a, a reading set as well on his classics. Last of the Abraham games once again. This is a very very poor one, but it was only like a, about one fifty, and I've picked it up literally as a filler because Zane Grey is quite a collectible um, Western writer, and um, you know, he. Uh, his books seem to still sell. I guess a lot of them are out of print now. So this is absolutely hammered. It is very much a filler until a better one comes along. So I'm not going to spend any more time on that except giving it a cursory brush off and clean. Another odd penguin handbook. Now I don't mind the handbooks, but I don't want to pay a lot for them because I just don't think even the early ones are, are worth paying big money for they would just come my way uh, this is one of the the offbeat ones improve your cricket <laughs> bit of a funny one this is full of photos so it's quite a stiff book to flick through but it's all right it's a pretty interesting one particularly if you're into cricket used to enjoy playing it when i was at school 1963 brilliant stuff and then I've got one more which is actually a penguin modern classic and it's a beast of a book look at this USA Ooh, that is a big one so it's a penguin 2418 and it is absolutely enormous um 
John de Passos. Now, I don't know a great deal about this one, but um, yeah, it looks like, I don't know, what, a thousand pages. It's just basically the history of, of the USA. Look at that. That's a book and a half to get stuck into, isn't it? And uh, released as a Penguin Modern Classic, which is quite an interesting choice, isn't it? 1966. Looks as if it was three books that um, that were put into one. So the 42nd Parallel, 1919, and The Big Money. And then they collected it in one form in 1938, and then published by Penguin as a Penguin Modern Classic in 1966. There we are, look at that. I bet there can't be many of those in such nice condition around. That's actually really, really nice from that. I mean, considering its size. Now, remember, if you bought something like that through mail order, you'd probably end up paying, well, best part of five repostage because it weighs more than two kilos. So anyway, that is all the books. So now what we're going to do, um, I'm just going to give them all a brush off. Okay, so I've got my uh, shoe brush for here. Now, I'm going to just sort these into smaller sort of handy sort of wedges that I can uh, hold in my hand to brush off easily. Now look at that one, I'm hoping that we're going to be able to do some real lightening of that top cover. Yeah, not bad at all actually taking quite a bit of. Now both of those have got sort of glossier covers so I'm going to be able to give them a decent polish. So I'm going to put the ones to polish over there and the ones I can't polish like the really vintage stuff uh, to the right. Those two can be, and that one definitely can't because it's got uh, the early pelicans don't have glossy covers, of course. Now, let's do these two. Two Ciceros. So they'll be okay to polish. Um, I almost feel I need to do on its own. And that cannot be polished because of its age. So hopefully, when I come back from Hay on Y, I'll be able to do a really good pickups video with all the stuff that I was able to find in the Homer books. And hopefully it'll be quite interesting. I'm hoping it's not going to be a disappointment going all that way. But whatever happens, it's going to satisfy my curiosity of knowing what Hay on Y is actually like. And I'm hoping that it will be a real eye-opener for my viewers as well. Because, you know, Hay on Y was always this sort of fabled place, you know, the home of books where there are all these fantastic bookshops. And there certainly used to be 30 or so second-hand bookshops in Hay and that seems to not be the case now but they want to make you believe that there is a lot of bookshops there just to keep the tourists coming but it appears as if that's not really the case anymore. Right, glossy, glossy and non-glossy so they can go there and those two can go over there. Thankfully I've got Steve, the Outlaw bookseller, going with me, and he's been there so many times for the last sort of 30 or so years that he'll be the perfect guide. And uh, we're going to have some good book chat on the way out, that's for certain. There we are. So these can all, they can all have a bit of a polish, and, uh, just a careful polish but they can be polished. But 
would absolutely need to do this today because I want to get my lists up to date before I head off tomorrow. So that definitely needed updating these penguins. So I don't want to be doubling up on some of the Graham Greens, which I'm bound to see while I'm up there. Um, no, I just needed to check. They can all be polished, yes. This one cannot. So let's give this a... Let me use the uh, brush on this one. So yeah, as you're watching this, in actual fact, I shall be halfway through that journey. Hoping for some decent weather with a bit of luck. Quite a dirty bit on that pelican there, that really dusty one. Um, it's got most of it off as you can see, but I'm going to give it one more dedicated brush with the toothbrush. Very, very sort of old pulpy paper that I used on these. There we are. Right, so these ones here not be touched because they're they've not got glossy covers so now we're ready for the polishing stage right then so armed with mr sheen which is starting to get a bit low i'm gonna have to get another one let's give these bad boys a bit of a bit of a buffing. Yeah, if you ever come across any of the uh, these pictorial penguins, they are worth picking up, any of them at all, because I think they've become little collectibles in their own right because they are so unusual, it doesn't matter what print in there, because as I said, some of these are reprints anyway. So, uh, worth, worth picking up. This copy was absolutely beautiful. Really, really nice one, this. That's what we should be striving for. Most of my later penguins are in really nice shape like that, but um, because I was really strict picking up later ones in nice condition. Um, but I don't mind if it's an author I really like because I've got a whole run of, of authors like that, which are my reading copies. Um, so I can just dive in. Um, so like George Orwell and Anthony Paul and Graham Greene's another one where they're just uh, PG Woodhouse, where they're, re they're re reprints all their copies, which are doubles, which I've kept just as readers. Hemingway is another one. Lovely, that's come out really nice. A good little series of that, and was like. Um, one of the last few Harry Harrison um, special effects movies, wasn't it? The Sinbad ones, and then they did um, was it Clash of the Titans was his last real hurrah, and then digital imagery took over, didn't it? And the stop motion era died to death. But back in the day, it was so very good, and the Sinbad films are great, great little trilogy. 
really benefiting from the clean greatly yeah, it's making a huge difference to this one I've pulled up loads of dirt off it wow but with that back cover now compared to how it was it's made a huge huge difference that's a really nice copy of that one now so that's really really improved that here's another one this is a good, one of the scarcer ones don't really know why was this chap was he a, a second or first world war a uh, second world war and uh oh, he was a, a free french fighter pilot um seconded to the raf during the second world war but that's an interesting story cool really really nice it's one of the best um of the uh the games designed covers and he actually did do this one um so that's cool my favorite i think is the one for the great escape which i've i've already shown that one on the channel so uh that's a really great great one for the great escape bit of dirt on the back but it, like the other one it's coming out lovely because it has got that nice glossy glossy cover on it glossy finish which uh, makes them fairly easy to clean so loads of dirt has come out but that's given it a real sort of luster let's put it right back in there yeah very nice that indeed happy prints Find a clean bit of uh, rag here, clean bit of cloth. So it's not going to be the longest of book cleaning videos this this time round this month because I haven't picked up that much. I've been very very busy at work, so that I can have a little bit of time off in June. I've got a week's holiday coming up, which is going to be great. And uh, I have been very very busy on the channel. The channel's been doing fantastic, so really really pleased with it. Um, I've been doing regular videos on the Steam Deck because it's like the hot new handheld system and I do cover that on the channel. So that's not book related. Um, it is sort of, I do have an audience for that. So I want to keep those videos going for the time being. But it doesn't mean there's going to be any less book content. There will always be something every week. And I've sort of got into doing the, um, a little bit more of the, like the talking head videos now. So picking a subject or talking about a particular subject and giving my thoughts on it. Um, I'd still very much like to do live a live stream and that should be really easy now being in the studio here. So uh, I'll put my thinking cap on about that coming up again, I think, because I do enjoy the ones that I've done. I've really enjoyed doing, but it's uh, just finding the right right moment, really. This one's sort of borderline, so I can only give it like a cursory, a cursory wipe. And the same for this one, the silver sword. It's not mega glossy, but it's enough. It does warrant like a little wipe over, but nothing too severe, you know?
This one was a little grubby. And I'm not sure how well it's going to clean up, to be honest. Because I think some of the grubbiness on it is just sort of ancient foxing, which I can't get off with a, a mere rub of the polish, sadly. Yes, yeah, so it's a bit dirty, this one. A little bit lower than I would like. Um, but for now... It'll do as a filler. There we are. So uh, I recently watched the uh, Sky Adaptation of the Midwich Cuckoos uh, by John Wyndham, one of my favourite authors. Um, it wasn't bad, but it, I can't believe they took such a, a thin book and made it seven parts, you know, seven hours to dramatise it. It just seemed a bit OTT. Um, there were a few little flaws. It was, you know, well made. It was got a, an excellent cast. It was just... Uh, yeah. I don't know. It's a difficult one to, to modernise, really. All the recent sort of modern versions of Wyndham stories have fallen a bit flat for me. The uh, the Day of the Triffids one, which was, well, admittedly, that, even that was a few years ago now, but um, I didn't get much on that. The last sort of definitive one for me was the uh, John Dateen one from about 1980. That was brilliant. That still is absolutely cracking, that one. amount to do today but I wonder I just really don't know how I'm going to get on at hey on why how if I'm going to find loads of stuff I don't think I'm going to be finding like boxes of cheap paperbacks or anything but you just don't know until you go there what might be on display or might be on sale um, I'm going to have my wants list all with me and it would be nice to think I could find a few pans and penguins to bring back maybe a nice first edition I could treat myself to you know something a bit collectible that would be pretty cool wouldn't it games designed covers which is uh come up very very nice that's okay in the light i can see a couple of little marks and we got the i, I was sister and this had a i think i cleaned this one last time and it it had a ring on it which I can't get off, <laughs> sadly. This was my original one. It's never had a wipe, I don't think so. Yes, it's not yet, so I'll give it one now.
this 60s one has got a glossy cover so I can lightly spray on there direct just enough to give it that hopefully take up any of the surface dirt which is definitely there on this you know 60 year old book but it should come up a little beauty when it's uh, finished it's definitely uh lightening up looking quite lively and these are the sorts of things that you know when you're out and about somewhere like hay I would hope to find tucked away in like a pound a, a pound a piece and that's where I'll I'll pick mine up you know I don't really want to be paying like three pound for an old penguin handbook um, when I know that they're out there cheap it's just a matter of lucking across them it's a, a ridiculous series to try and collect because they're so on so many different subjects and some of them are really really obscure that I think it's one of the tougher series to collect but it would only be really be a penguin completist who'd ever actually want to have a stab at it you know and I don't really go out of my way to collect them really it's just these are just ones that have come my way anyway, I think that's uh, cleaned it up and made it quite quite vibrant that one right just got that big thick USA one now which once again on the surface you can't actually see a lot of uh, a lot of dirt but I know it's there because this is a 60 year old book from when it was published but very nice to have another modern classic that I don't have in my collection a fantastic book on the Penguin Modern Classics got released uh, a few months back at Christmas and if you've not got a copy I re heartily recommend it fantastic book ironically I don't remember seeing this one in it but I might have missed it Loads of dirt coming off this one, as I expected, to be honest. Quite, quite an unusual, probably the biggest penguin I think I've got. That all war and peace. <laughs> uh, brilliant, good stuff. So there you go, I hope you enjoyed that little look at my recent acquisitions there certainly wasn't loads there for the month of may i've really not had a chance to to really go out and uh, and look for some of my gaps in my collection but um, certainly some nice additions as well so i hope you enjoyed it thank you very much for watching today if you've not already do please hit that subscribe button and i'll look forward to seeing you again very soon bye <laughs>